Hello everyone and welcome to the commentary version of Ray Zero Space Simulating a Space Future 4. This begins with the launch of a crewed lunar lander to the same location where we had previously deposited the lunar lander. And here we have the Cassay rocket with six boosters. Uh, so the main rocket has hydrogen and oxygen in it and the boosters have methane and oxygen. And we need all that payload capacity because it is carrying a space capsule that will return the crew back to Earth, but also the Kumo lunar lander, which is currently enshrouded in the fairing. And so here is liftoff from Tampico. After this, we have the continuation of the construction of Newport Depot with a new module. That depot is meant to supply various missions with propellant. It stores the propellant there, and then they can pick it up from it in orbit. And that's mainly for missions that are coming back from the moon, but we don't want to have them land in order to pick up the propellant, basically. Here the Kasei rocket is past maximum dynamic pressure and continuing on. It is basically a more capable space launch system, or if you'd like, uh, sort of like an Ares 5, but also better than that. Just better than everything else, darn it. Uh, it is still an 8.4 meter core, and that's why we needed the bulbous fairing in order to fit the Kumo Lunar Lander. The Kumo Lunar Lander was designed for a 10 meter fairing, and that's because SLS has that option. So here we have booster separation. Off go those three. Of course, there's three on the other side. And now it's just a core with five engines on it. Uh, release of the launch escape system. And there is the Lynx spacecraft there. Lynx is basically equivalent to Orion. It carries four people. However, it is a little bit lighter than Orion, though not lighter than the Apollo spacecraft. So depending on how you look at it, I mean, it depends how comfortable you want your astronauts, basically. So here we go, staging. Off goes the first stage. The second stage just has one of the first stage engines on it and that engine has a vacuum nozzle to give it better efficiency up here. Having such a heavy and powerful engine on the upper stage means that it is more conducive to low Earth orbit heavy payloads, and this will be doing plenty of that carrying propellant up for our depot and for other missions. Uh, as with any attempt to explore space, you're going to end up having, haul, uh, having to haul a lot of propellant. Uh, but it does seem to do okay with higher orbits and going to the moon and going to Mars. It's just a matter of maybe I've under it a little bit and the real thing would be heavier. The heavier the engine is, the less optimized it is for the higher orbits. In order to deal with the potential inefficiency of having a large engine like this though, there is an option and that is to have a smaller stage on top of this stage and that one will have lighter engines. So as we see during the translunar injection burn, that this stage running out, I have another stage there, and that stage has four RL-10C1s. And this is basically identical to the EUS stage of Space Launch System SLS, except that it is slightly less in diameter because it's designed to fit inside Starship. So it is meant to be a Starship boost stage. And in this case, it's being used to carry our capsule and our lander over to the moon. And so our four Kerbals are on their way. Two of them will land on the moon and two will stay with the orbital spacecraft. Next up, we have the launch of Starship and Super Heavy with a new module for our depot. And so that's the LP2 depot launching from Tampico. And this is again, Pekka's Starship and Super Heavy with all the special effects and everything and the filling up of the propellant, all very fancy, and same with the tower and the mount and everything, all P.E.K.K.A.s. And off we go. Now P.E.K.K.A. has adjusted this Starship and Super Heavy for the apparent current state of it, which doesn't have as much payload capacity as maybe they were aiming for. Uh, I think we could get like 75 tons or 70 to 75 tons to orbit while still preserving the ability to reuse everything. So of course they're planning to add extra engines to Starship, make it 9 engines and extra engines to Super Heavy and then lengthen everything in order to give it its intended payload capacity. Uh, but yeah, it's matching the current specs and the current trajectories based on the information P.E.K.K.A. Uh, collected. 
So for now, rather than using Starship for the heavy propellant launches, I'll use Kasei for those, and this will be used for the bulky station modules, which needs a fairly large rocket to carry them, but aren't actually that heavy. So that's what we're doing here. So we have staging, and off goes Super Heavy, trying to return, but the landing is still not perfected yet for Tampico. Again, uh, the landings had been perfected for Boca Chica, but Tampico is different. We have specific launch pads that they need to aim for, and uh, also the landing of Starship that had some peculiarities. I still have to figure that out. But getting to orbit at least is not a problem, and here we see it trucking away. And it generally completes orbit over Florida. So here we go, and shut down. A reminder that the velocity up there is the surface velocity because we started at zero. So this is in fact orbit. Rendezvousing with the depot with Starship is always interesting because its RCS is somewhat underpowered for rendezvous and its engines are way overpowered to do any rendezvous burns. Uh, I would like some sort of middle engine between those, but alas, uh, mainly I use the RCS and just take my time with it. But occasionally I try and fire the vacuum engines and that's always quick. <laughs> that's always quick. Here go the tugs, uh, the bay, and we've seen this sort of situation before. We get the out of the bay with the tugs and it will be docked to the depot. These are crewed modules and this particular one has the docking port, the NASA docking system on one end so this will be where visiting craft will be docking with their own NASA docking systems. The other docking port I use which you can see on the front end right there is the pass-through docking port which I especially made so that Kerbals could actually go through them and that allows for the pass-through system, though these are not pass-through modules, but that allows for the situation where if we had the Kerbals coming out of these modules, then they could go into a craft that has the pass-through system like the Shinkansen Neo, uh, where its docking port has basically a tunnel after it where the Kerbals can go through. And so the pass-through docking port is necessary to make that possible. So here we're docking, gotta make sure that the rotation is right too, hopefully it's okay. And there was a little bit of an issue with it agreeing that everything was in line, and I had to turn the RCS off to get the game to really dock them together, but there it is. That's how the depot looks right now, still lots of modules to carry up. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.